So, this creature which uh, crawls over the screen is not an alien from the outer space. This is a, just a tiny water flea transferred from the Caspian Sea uh, in ballast water uh, to the Baltic. Uh, it's quite a sm it has quite a small uh, body, just two millimeters, but uh, the tail is long. It's about one centi centimeter. When millions of such uh, creatures appear in the water, uh, they enmesh by their uh, tails and uh, are forming uh, cotton-like lumps which clog fishery nets. And the fishermen, instead of uh, catching fish, they are supposed to clean their nets. This is an example of one of the uh, biological invasions, which uh, the phenomenon which uh, interests me as a researcher for many recent years. The biological invasions in a broad sense is a movement uh, of uh, organisms to areas where they did not previously occur, beyond the limits. For many year, million of years, uh, the continents were isolated one from another, uh, forming the amazing diversity and distinctive distribution of life, which we call biogeographical provinces. In recent decades, biological invasions are mostly caused by humans. At an increasing rate, they are changing, uh, they are moving species intentionally or unintentionally uh, between continents uh, and they are mixing the world's uh, living organisms. Like uh, the, this uh, Chinese wheat crop which was moved from China to uh, Germany and then spread all over Europe, like uh, the round gobi which uh, came uh, to the Baltic Sea and the Great Lakes of North America from the, uh, from the Black Sea, like the North American uh, uh, comb jelly which appeared in the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea and so on and so on. Uh, the human mediated invasions are uh, one of the unavoidable consequences of the global change. This is a snapshot of the marine traffic, just one day of the marine traffic. There you, have see, you, you can see the different types of uh, uh, cargo, mercant ships, they are moving cargo, and at the same time uh, they are uh, uh, moving hundreds and thousands of uh, tons of uh, ballast water. Just imagine the uh, uh, size of Olympic swimming pool, uh, each uh, ship is moving uh, several tens, sometimes hundreds of uh, Olympic pools of water. And with this water, the vast number of coastal organisms uh, will be released, uh, uh, will be taken in one port and released in another. This is what is called ecological roulette, because we cannot uh, actually uh, uh, predict where these species will end up. Not only ships, also trains, uh, airplanes and road transport are involved in the transportation of organisms for aquaculture, live food, trade, stocking uh, of sport fish, for garden food and so on. Uh, and it is a growth in the world trade, removal of custom barriers, increased movement of people and anthropogenic change in the environment has what has led to changing geography of living species. An invasion starts usually in the area uh, where a species is native, then uh, the organisms get into a carrier, be it a ship or train or airplane, and uh, whilst they are being transported over the environmental barrier, uh, this may be a uh, uh, vast uh, space of the open ocean, mountains, deserts, which they cannot n overcome normally. Then a small part of these organisms uh, survive the transportation and arrive to a new environment. Then, uh, if lucky, some of them may settle here and survive. Then, if conditions are suitable, uh, there is enough food, no nasty enemies, sufficient space for living, a small part of these survivors may start to multiply and expand in a new invaded area. This is how a biological invasion happens. The impact of uh, biological invasions, of introduced invasive species, sometimes are very serious. Uh, an introduced pathogen can infect humans with a new disease. Uh, an invasive species may serve as a secondary parasite uh, 
uh, host for a human uh, for, a for a human parasite, and it's, uh, some of them they can produce toxins which uh, poison uh, marine uh, food. Uh, there are also many examples of economic losses uh, caused by uh, biological invasions. And this is, uh, at this picture you can see an uh, example from Ireland. Uh, this sea squirt didendum uh, vexillum from dents falling on the hull of the boat. And this species is also known to cause serious problems to aquaculture because it overgrows cultured mussels. Until now, in spite of several decades of dedicated research, it is impossible to predict uh, the next biological invasions and its it, it consequences. In the 60s, Edward Lawrence, a meteorologist, mathematician, and a pioneer of Hayes theory, he produced several fo a few for formulas which allowed with quite good accuracy to predict, uh, 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 to predict atmospheric uh, circulation and to predict weather for one or two years and beforehand. The state of the weather systems uh, uh, can be estimated by a relatively small number of easily measured parameters, such as uh, uh, air temperature, uh, uh, speed of winds, and direction of winds, humidity. Uh, but when we are talking about biological invasions, uh, we are talking about uh, uh, an order of magnitude uh, uh, higher number of parameters which should be taken in, uh, into account, physical, chemical, biological, even socio-economical. So prediction of biological invasions uh, and the risk they pose remains as, uh, as a great challenge to science. So this is why a precautionary approach is, uh, uh, is recommended. Uh, precautionary approach means prevention of any new species arrival. The United Nations International Maritime Organization designed the uh, Ballast Water Management Convention, which just entered into force uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, and ballast water uh, may be managed uh, either exchanging the water at high sea or using the ballast water sterilization uh, systems installed on ships. Uh, and this convention is intended to prevent, minimize, and ultimately eliminate risks or associated with harmful organisms transferred in ballast water. Well, so precautionary approach may uh, help to avoid the risk, but when talking about uh, uh, the invasive species, we should avoid militaristic lexicons. Many times, the mass media in different languages presents invaded species as our enemies, uh, towards which we have to show zero tolerance. In fact, well, just read this. Uh, these species don't belong here. They are plugging the landscape with untold economic and biodiversity impacts. They need to eradicate them whenever possible. This is war. Uh, such metaphors may have drawn attention to invasive species uh, in the short term, but ultimately, of course, they are inadequate, provoking misleading perception of, of the invasive species as a phenomenon, a negative social, resonance like a xenophobia. So uh, we, we must be more careful as they are not uh, our enemies. And in any case, we cannot win this war because it was uh, it, it, uh, uh, we were the ones which uh, transferred them from one continent to another. So yeah, the press needs to sell their newspapers, of course, but scientists need to state the reality and do not reinforce militarism and lose scientific credibility. But wh what should we do if uh, such species is already there and uh, uh, how can we get rid of it? Uh, in most cases, it is, it is impossible to eliminate. We cannot poison the coastal ecosystem or blow it up. So let's consider this invader from the, uh, from the Black Sea, the round goby, Neogobius melanostomus. It was uh, introduced most probably with the ballast water, first appearing in the Baltic Sea in the uh, in, in Gulf of Gdansk in Poland, and then spread to all uh, countries around the Baltic Sea, also to Lithuania. And now this is the most numerous, most abundant species in our waters. It, uh, because of this species, now the uh, number of local bottom-dwelling fishes declined uh, very considerably, uh, and not only that, you can see uh, here at the uh, upper uh, video, we can see what uh, 
how the bottom looked like several uh, years ago before uh, invader came to our area. You can see what all boulders are densely covered by blue mussels, uh, which are uh, filtering the water, uh, cleaning it, and are forming actually a very powerful uh, uh, natural biofilter. Uh, after invasion, now when we, uh, uh, when we see hundreds, thousands of uh, uh, round gobi on the bottom, uh, what we can see uh, below, this is, uh, it looks like the uh, boulders were cleaned by somebody, because uh, round gobi ate all the, uh, all the mussels. So, can we do something about that? Uh, well, probably we can try to control its abundance, uh, and this was done very successfully by a uh, local municipality in, in Palanga, which uh, they uh, arrange a round gobi festival in Palanga. Uh, outside of the normal tourist season, they managed to attract thousands of people, uh, hundreds of them they're enthusiastically catching invader, the invader, trying to win the competition uh, for the biggest catch. And uh, the catch was measured not by individual fishes and not even by weight, it was measured in, in buckets. So, and uh, well, the yield was used to produce various delicious products such as uh, this smoked fish on the left, why not? After all, in the, in the Ukraine, uh, there it originally came from. This gobi uh, was awarded in a, a monument as a bread winner. So, um, the message is that an introduced alien species can be sometimes useful, or at least can be used sometimes. Still, it is necessary to refrain from uh, an uncontrolled transfer of uh, organisms by taking preventive, preventive measures to avoid biological invasions. Until now, we are not able to predict the outcome of such introductions. And this is a big challenge to science. New methods are needed, such as machine learning, uh, to analyze the emerging big data about species movements and their consequences. Our decisions on the removal and control of invasive species, what already exists should be based on pragmatic cost-benefit assessments. We should think beyond the limits and don't judge, judge species just on their origin. Thank you.